Starving Tracy Baker by Jacqueline Wilson, Part Seven. I stayed in the classroom all by myself and did my math homework. The inky numbers on my page kept blurring and blotch, as if they were being rained on. I used up two tissues and my sleeve mopping up. I whistled along to the cloakroom just before the start of afternoon school to splash cold water on my face and bumped into Miss Simpkins. She had Gloria T Taylor, Emily Lawson, and Amy Jellis so with her. They were all looking at, up at her, hopefully, eyes huge like puppies in better see dogs home going pick me, Miss Simpkins. Oh, Tracy, said Miss Simpkins. She waved her hand at Gloria and Amy, Emily and Amy. Run along, girls. I'll let you know tomorrow, she said. They each gave me a picture glance and then ran off, obviously. They've been adopting for school, Scrooge, haven't they? I said. Flatly, yes, they have, said Miss Sinkins. She lowered her voice to a whisper, and they all tried their best. But strictly between you and me, Tracy, they're rubbish compared to you. So, which one are we going to pick, Miss Sinkins? I don't know, she said, sighing. It's such a big part, and there's hardly any time left to learn it. Gloria's the only girl who could learn it all by heart, but she runs through it like a railway station a concert with no expression whatsoever. Emily can at least act a little, but she can remember two consecutive lines, so she She'd have to have the script in her hands at whole time, and that would spoil things. So, are we going to choose Amy for Scourge? Amy is so sweet and soft and shy; she can barely make herself hear, and she can't act bad-tempered to save her life. She just doesn't convince as Scourge, whereas. I can act bad temper till the cows come home. I said, "Yes, you were my magnificent Scrooge," she said, sighing. Until Mrs. Dollar spoiled everything. I said, "No, Tracy. Until you spoiled everything," said Miss Simpkins. Although I know you were severely provoked, I've tried explaining the circumstances to Mrs. Dollar in vain. I'm sorry to say. Well, thank you, Miss Simpkins. I said, I'm sorry I mucked it all up. It seems a shame you've got to pay so dearly for it," said Miss Simpkins. "You don't know the half of it," I said darkly. "I'm paying for it with Nobson. Even back at the home, I'm acting an unpaid." Skivvy cleaning up after all the kids, isn't that unbelievably unfair? I think you should report them to the NSPCC. Okay. I'll think about it," said Miss Simpkins. But she was struggling hard not to laugh. I certainly didn't feel like laughing when I came home, utterly exhausted from school, to have Jenny hand me the Hoover and Mike. Trust the mop and bucket and me. I been secretly hoping that this was one big bluff. I was awkward to realize they really mean to go through with it. Let me have my tea first for Picky's sake. I said. I took my time munching my banana. Cool meal sandwich and my handful of nuts and my orange and my apple juice. Oh, for the days of unhealthy eating when we wolfed down crisps and chocolate and cakes and coke. Then I stomp off to my room to change out of my school uniform and put on my oldest jeans and faded T-shirt. I stopped. 
to look at the postcard from mom on my notice board. I suddenly felt so sad I had to lie on my bed with my head under my pillow just in case anyone overhead my sudden attack of hay fever. I was still feeling sniffly when I trailed down the stairs, sighing considerably. No one was around to hear me. The other kids all seemed to be whispering together in the kitchen. It was all right for some ugly people. Poor little Cinderella Baker had to stay home and tackle all the chores. I picked up the Hoover, switched it on, and started shoving it backwards and forwards across the hall. It was so heavy, so clumsy, so awkward. My arms were aching and my back hurt from bending. Over already, and yet I had only done one weeny patch of carpet. I had the whole huge dumping ground to re render spotless. I pinched the hoover violently into the skirting board and gave it a kick. I was only wearing soft shoes. It hurt horribly. I switched the hateful hoover off and doubled up, nursing my poor stubble toes. I hear more whispering and giggles. Shut up, you lot, I snarled. Peter popped in his head round the kitchen door. Tracy, are you okay? I'm obviously in the pink, I said, scared. Sarcastically, in the rose pink, salmon pink, patina pink, not. How do you think I feel knowing I've got the random the task of cleaning up the dumping ground single-handed? Not quite single-handed, said Peter. Come on, gang. All the kids suddenly sprang out of the kitchen into the hall. Peter stood in front, jersey sleeves rolled up his puny little arms to a tea towel tied round his waist like a peony. They were all clutching dusters and mops and brushes and pens. Lucy was there, her long hair tied up in a scarf. Justin sloughed out last, wearing Mike's strippy cooking apron, apron and whittling a scrubbing brush. We're all going to do the cleaning, said Peter. It seemed so horribly mean that you had to do it all. So we're helping out. It will be fun. N not my idea of fun, you little rat, said Justin, juggling her scrubbing brush. Rosie caught it and held it on to it. It was just as much our fault as yours, Tracy, she said. We all got so mad. So Peter's right. We should all channel our aggression into housework. So, okay, troops, let's get cracking, said Peter. He looked at me. Okay, Tracy? For once, I was totally speechless. I just nodded very hard and blinked very hard and hoped very hard that I wouldn't ultra disgrace myself at home. We let funny little Peter order us around, telling each of us what to do because it was easier than us be ones arguing about it. We put radios playing the loudest rock and rap music in every corner of dumping ground and then set to with a vengeance. Eleni the pain came calling halfway the she called backwards covering her ears but when J Jenny and Mike explained it having to below a bit she clapped her hands excitedly and went prancing around, congratulating everyone on their team spread. It reflects the very essence of Christmas loving and sharing and caring, she said, jamming her rein reindeer antlers on her head and rushing around, giving everyone a little pat on the back. It's a wonder, Eleni. Ridiculous reindeer pain didn't make 
them sink. What on earth am I doing scrabbling away when I could be watching the telly or playing on my Xbox or simply lounging on my bed picking my nose because I definitely don't love Tracy Baker and I don't care tuppence about her and I certainly don't want to share her stupid punishment. But somehow they took no notice and carried on dusting and scrubbing and scoring and hoovering. I felt as if all the dirty, grubby, creamy, crispy little bits of me were getting a clean and polished too. Maybe they didn't like me just a little bit after all. I still had some stuff left over from my raid on the art cupboard. Then my night I labor long and hard over a big cart. I drew the dumping ground and all of us all of us guys outside armed with dusters and brushes and mops. I even drew Justin properly. Though it was very tempting to cross her eyes and scribble little bogies hanging from her nose. I put me in the center with a big beamy smile. I drew little rays and sunshine all around my picture and then I printed at the top in that artistic rainbow lettering. The Tracy Baker Cleaning Service. Thanks for your help everyone. I crept downstairs and stuck in it on the table so that everyone would see it at breakfast time. I snuffled half a packet of cornflakes and an orange so I could have breakfast in my room. I didn't want to be hanging around when they saw the car. It would be way too embarrassing. I wasn't used to acting all mussy and saying thank you. I'd have to watch it. I was used to being the toughest kid on the block. I would be fatal so soft and I'm now. I tried hard to be my normal, fierce and festive self at school. I summoned up all my energy to check the teachers and argue with the kids, but it was hard work. I found myself sharing my chocolate bar with Peter in the playground and picking up some little kid who'd fallen over and kicking someone's ball straight back to them, acting like Miss Goody Goody, two trainers instead of the so tough and terrible Tracy Baker. When everyone went to rehearse a Christmas carol, I wonder which of the three stooge missings had picked a scourge. I couldn't help being glad that they were all pretty useless. Halfway through the first lesson in the afternoon, Mrs. Dolo sent for me. Oh, Tracy, said Miss Brown sorrowfully. What have you been up to now? Nothing, Miss Brown, I said. I've been a positive angel all day. Miss Brown didn't look as if she believed me. I couldn't really blame her. She wasn't to know I was this new squeaky clean sweat as Honey Baker. The end.